We've had it a lot of days like this when it's raining, but it's sunshiny. Now, you may remember we made our composting toilet a while ago with a Kildwick separator. That was only kind of step one of the toilet. We are diverting our urine down into the gray tank to help keep the smells down and away and with a little 12 volt fan. I feel air. We just got back from the hardware store. Now I have to drive back to the hardware store. We're Mela and Don. We uprooted our lives and left Los Angeles with the dream of converting an MCI D3 40 foot bus into a tiny home on wheels. We are sharing our progress one bite at a time. <laughs> what? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? <laughs> <laughs> It is a very comfortable morning. Oh, it feels great out. You guys have no idea how oppressive this Midwestern humidity is. It's so great to not have that instantly grumpy factor because you're uncomfortable. Today, we're going to see if we can get started on building up our wall for our shower area. It's a little bit complicated and we've had three different plans so far, but we finally settled on one that I think will work. We've got four different pipes that need to get from underneath the skylight to over and underneath our base. Now if you were watching when we did our demolition, you probably remember that the whole center of our bus on the floor, there's all of these tubes and controls so the bus can talk to the engine from the front. So we can't just drill straight down in this area. So what we're thinking is we're gonna put up a false wall, just some two by twos so we can run our plumbing pipes through there. Some of that plumbing is for our composting toilet. Now you may remember we made our composting toilet a while ago with a Kildwick separator. That was only kind of step one of the toilet. Now that we're actually gonna put the toilet inside of the bus, we can do step two. We are diverting our urine down into the gray tank. We're gonna add the Kildwick stainless steel siphon. People often think the composting toilet that the smelliest part is the back in the poop bucket. But it's really the pee that you need to worry about because that pee, while it's going down to the gray tank, that gray tank is also pretty stinky and those smells can come back up. So that's why we have this siphon from Kildwick to help keep the smells down and away and out of our living space. Now the other ways Kildwick has offered for us to minimize our smells from our toilet is with a little 12 volt fan. So we're gonna set this little fan up in our composting toilet and we're gonna run an exhaust pipe down into the luggage bay below and outside. And if you missed our compost toilet build, we'll link that video down below in the description. First thing we do is measure the height for our two by two studs and cut them down to size. Just enough wood to do four of them full size. Unfortunately, without running to the hardware store, we could use these miniature blocks. There's three different pieces for a full length. Since it's all gonna be screwed into the other wall, I'm not worried about it being consistent. Yay for scrap wood, organized so we can find what we need. And I think it's a time that we address the elephant on our heads. The elephant on our heads? Yeah, our new headwear. <laughs> Why are they elephants? Because everybody's been watching the video going, what are they wearing on their heads? <laughs> Have they? Have you? <laughs> Have you been thinking that? <laughs> well, we just got sent these from our friend Sherry at the Better Soap Company. She gets scrap t-shirt material from this company and she turns them into like beanies and headbands so they're completely zero waste. And we love them. Thank you, Sherry. Well, we got all of our beams cut, unfortunately. 
I mean, imagine, imagine that. They're all gonna have little extra pieces at the top, but it's gonna be fine. So now all I need to do is put some pilot holes in all of our studs. And I'm also going to use the 82 degree countersink. So my screws will sink all the way flat into my studs. We're gonna screw in our beams just at the top and the bottom just to hold them in place. So then we can figure out where we need to cut holes for all our hoses to run. The siphon has a bracket that we will screw and mount onto the front of our composting toilet. And then on that bracket, it's got a place for a bolt that attaches to the siphon itself. Because there's a long area where that bolt can move around, we'll be able to adjust it and get it to fit properly for our system so the urine diverter hits it perfectly. Which hole are you doing first? This one. Okay, so... You're in the right spot. Mm -hmm. What? Hold it. <laughs> it's just funny working in such tiny spaces. <laughs> That's our life, working in a tiny space. <laughs> Screwing in tiny spaces. You're gonna get a lot of comments about that one. What? Screwing, Screwing in tiny spaces. <laughs> our Kildwick siphon will add leak and odor protection to our composting toilet. It'll help guide the liquid safely into our gray tank and makes the toilet spill proof at up to a 40 degree angle. The siphon also will reduce oxygen exposure to the gray tank and that'll slow down odor development. It's made out of stainless steel, which means it's super easy to clean and it should last like forever. Now what I like about Kildwick is they've made it really easy for you. If you're not super DIY inclined, you can buy the whole toilet and it's all pretty easy to put together. Or if you're like us and you want to customize your toilet, you can buy just the parts for the toilet that you want. So now that we've got our hose hooked up to our siphon, we have to be very careful and make sure that it's always going downhill from the composting toilet to get to meeting up with a pipe to our uh, waste tank. I went ahead and marked the areas on our studs where we're going to cut our holes so that we can snake our liquid waste through the wall and down into those tanks. Well, we're trying to get the electrical components ready for the 12 volt fan set is like a computer fan where we actually will wire up a plug to plug the power in instead of just hard wiring in our positive and negative right to the switch. And turn it off. Yeah, it turned off, okay. And it's blowing toward my fingers. Good. Feel you that, Mella? You feel it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wanna put your head down there? Hmm. Dry your hair off? <laughs> So when we put all of our wire runs in the ceiling, before we put the ceiling up, we had planned a fan circuit of 12 volts. So we've got our max fan, and we've got this power run right here, because we knew we were gonna put a fan into our composting toilet. Well, that fan is right here. It is Kildwick's 12 volt fan set. And what's nice about it, it's got a very hefty stainless steel mounting, so we can put an exhaust hose in right past the fan and keep all those unpleasant odors moving out of the vehicle at all times. So before I put holes in the toilet and put everything together, I'm just gonna connect our positives and negatives, grip them together, Oh yeah, that's a nice breeze. 
hate one of these on my hat right here. Crystal fan <laughs> for my face. Okay. Works. There she blows. There she blows. <laughs> this time it's our, it actually works to say that. <laughs> You were just a little early before with that joke. <laughs>
for our PEX pipes. We can later thread our PEX pipes through these conduits and the reason we wanted to do that is if there's ever a leak in our pipes it'll still be contained within this conduit hose that we have around it which will run out and lead the water out of the bus. We can call that a day. We need to get screws, we need to get other, other supplies, so another trip to the hardware store before we can complete this project. After yet another session of planning in the bathroom, we finally decided on our bathroom wall height and design. We're gonna double check some measurements and then we're gonna get started on building this wall for the bathroom. What were you working on today? <laughs> well, I came in thinking I was going to paint the walls that are not part of the shower white and then I was like, oh, but we gotta fill in holes and we were out of the Craig pocket hole plugs, didn't realize it. So we just got back from the hardware store, now I have to drive back to the hardware store. It's like half an hour's drive away. But Don said, wait, before I start building this wool closet thing, let's discuss it. And now my head is spinning, <laughs> so many little things to think about way more complicated doing the bathroom. Well, I got the Craig Hall plugs, the holes are filled in, but we're still figuring out how to build this half three-quarter wall for our shower and its storage. We're not going to explain to you exactly what's going on with this wall and cabinet that's between our toilet and our shower yet. You'll have to wait till the next video, we'll explain it all then. Because honestly, every single day we keep finding new things we need to think about and changing our mind about how to construct it. We're trying our best to make it as simple as possible. But there's so many things you have to think about when there's plumbing involved and how the water gets there. and can make sure the water doesn't get out when you're showering and all these kind of things that it is kind of complicated the bathroom is our smallest space and we did that on purpose we know it's our smallest space because we wanted the other areas to be very very comfortable and we were okay making the bathroom tiny but that does mean there's a lot of thought that has to go into this and each day we keep changing our plan and trying to fine-tune the plan to make sure it looks good and works well. So we'll catch you up on that next week probably. But in the meantime, I've been hoping to paint today but really I think that we need to finish constructing this wall and cabinet and then I can paint once we've figured that out. I think that will make more sense and I hope that made sense to you. We've had it a lot of days like this when it's raining, but it's sunshiny. It's amazing you put a box together and it starts to look like something. <laughs> Anybody else been cutting plywood the last couple weeks and it's just horrible sawdust. I don't know what the story is. I think it's maybe the quality of plywood that's available. And not to mention it's 80 bucks a sheet. Sheet!
after several days, maybe weeks of planning, we finally got to start eating on our shower wall, which will also double as our access area for peat moss, trash, toilet paper, storage for toiletries, and we'll have drawers in this area. Now there's going to be an area that's built up on here. Took a lot to figure out how to get it just right to go into this space since it's all custom. I'm very pleased with the way it's fitting now. My dad's been amazing at helping me out today. So I'm just gonna put the top on and we'll call it a day. Good morning. The boys are out of town today. They're uh, taking a class and you'll hear all about that in the future. But I can finally go and get those bathroom walls painted. We're going with all white walls in the bathroom. It's such a tiny space that we feel like we have to stick with white to just kind of keep it looking as bright and open as possible. If you're wondering what happened to my arm, well, the other day I told you I had to go to the hardware store to get some Craig Hole plugs and I walked out and something stung me. I think it was a wasp. I didn't get a good look at it. I was minding my own business. Something just flew into me and stung my arm and I seem to have a bit of a reaction to it. Didn't close my throat, so I'm totally fine, but believe it or not, this is actually starting to look better. The bathroom is the room that has challenged us the most design-wise. But we are really happy with all the individual elements, a compost toilet, the shower, and a vanity. It has taken us a long time to figure out how to make it work in such a small space. But we can't wait to build it all out and show you what we've come up with. It is really humid today. It's probably gonna take a really long time to dry. So I will probably just come back later this evening to continue layering on that paint. But I am gonna wrap up this video right here. I wanna say a big thank you for Kildwick for helping us make this awesome DIY compost toilet. Be sure to check out below for the link to the Kildwick website. We'll also link all the individual products that we bought. This Kildwick separator, the 12 volt fan set and the urine siphon and if you're thinking about buying any Kildwick products please consider using our link in the description because that way we will get a little kickback at no extra cost to you it's an easy way for you to support us I'm sure you've got a lot of questions about our shower and this weird cabinet shower wall that we've been building this episode. But don't you worry, we will reveal all our shower secrets. But we'll share that with you next time. We always have wrens that like to come and make nests in the garage. And last year we showed you the wren like was up in a container up in the shelf there. But we just discovered, we've seen a wren coming in the garage regularly, so we knew there was a nest somewhere and we just found it. But check where it is. So, I guess your dad can't wear his outfit anymore to work on the <laughs> stuff he wanted to. He's now a dedicated nest. <laughs>